I think it's time for an upgrade. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a second year medical student studying in Canada. Now, recently, after what felt like weeks of research, I finally made the decision to upgrade from the 2014 MacBook Air to the 2020 MacBook Air with the brand new M1 chip. Now, I've been using the brand new MacBook Air for about the last week, and it's totally blown me away. I've used it exclusively, and it's been able to handle absolutely everything that I've been able to throw at it so far. I'm a full-time medical student. I also do some research on the side, as well as manage a small YouTube channel and a few other projects. And to be totally honest with you guys, I'm definitely not the most tech person in the world probably a little bit more tacky than, than techy and that's a hard joke but anyways what I really wanted to do today was give you guys my student focused review for the brand new 2020 MacBook with the M1 chip so the first thing that we should do is start off with a tour of the brand new MacBooks it's a 13 inch display and this is the base model the very most introductory model that you could get some of the new features compared to some of you guys that might still be using some of the older MacBooks there is now a touch sensor right on the top right corner of the keyboard there's also the trackpad right here in addition to two microphones that run on either side of the keyboard and an HD camera right at the top that records in 720p. Now the laptop itself is super lightweight. It fits in my bag really easily and a lot of times you don't even remember that it's in there. I chose to get mine in the space gray um, which is the first time because normally I just get it in the silver. I've also gone ahead and put just a protector on the bottom because I noticed with a few of my other laptops that I've had in the past that this is always the first thing to scratch. So just a little something that I got off of Amazon to keep it from scratching. Now just in comparison to some of the older Macs, even though this is still a 13 inch display, what you'll see is that it's significantly smaller. Um, and the way that they did that was they actually trimmed off some of the excess room on the screen here so that instead when you open up the laptop, all you're left with is the screen from one side to the other. One other thing that you notice with these new Macs is that they only have a few ports on the side. You have your headphone jack on the right hand side, and then you only have two lightning ports on this side. So if you do want to connect your phone or any other things, USB keys, you are going to need an additional adapter. Um, you can either get one from Apple for like 60 to to $100, crazily priced, or you can just go on Amazon and pick yourself up one for like $25. Thing works great. Now, I'm going to assume that at least a lot of you have heard of the specs for these new MacBooks, but for those of you that haven't, they're absolutely incredible. Just as a reference, there was actually two versions of the MacBook Air that came out in 2020. The earlier version in February and then these newer ones with the Apple Silicone, the M1 chip that came out recently. Now when these were checked online, it turns out that these new generation of MacBooks were about three to three and a half times faster than the old generation in terms of processing power and that's a really big deal. On top of that though, you're also getting the extended battery life and then also just tighter integration overall with the M1 chip. That's going to be as techy as I'm going to get with this thing. I'm going to go ahead and post it in the description if you want to see the breakdown, but it's been able to handle anything that I've been able to throw at it in medical school so far. More importantly though, especially for students, let's talk about the price. I got this laptop about two weeks ago now for $1,170 before tax, and that's Canadian dollars. And normally it's about $1,300 um, before tax. But if you actually use the student pricing, you're eligible for about a $130 discount, which is awesome. Now, about six years ago, I actually bought my old MacBook for about the same price. It was like $1,300, which means that the price of these laptops really hasn't changed over the last six years, but you are getting just so much more these days. For what you're able to do with it, I feel like this is definitely the most economical option when it comes to buying a laptop for school. And even though $1,100, $1,200 might sound like a lot, if you actually hold on to it and use it for six years, then each year you're only gonna be spending about $260 on the laptop, which if you run some math, is basically equivalent to one Starbucks coffee every single week. If you guys just held back on that one Starbucks, I know it's hard, you would be able to afford this 
this over the course of six years. But now finally, let's talk about functionality because the stats are great and individually, the programs all work really, really well. Everything that I've been able to run, all the Microsoft applications, Final Cut Pro, everything works great by itself. But just as a test and for those days where you're really just struggling to do a research meeting with your prof while editing a YouTube video, catching up on some anime and then also finishing up an assignment that's due at 12 o'clock the next day, you gotta have all these different windows open. What I'd see in a few of the other laptops that I tried out is that sometimes you'd have a little bit of errors that would load on the other pages. You'd have some slowing down of the frames or difficulty loading, but so far, nothing has been able to slow down the speed of the laptop for everything that I've been able to use. But then again, I'm also not really doing a lot of heavy gaming or other things of that nature. And to be totally honest, if you are gonna be using your MacBook for a lot of heavy gaming, you're probably just better off upgrading to the MacBook Pro. One of the major differences between the Air and the Pro is that the MacBook Air doesn't have a built-in internal fan, and that hasn't really stopped me from using it at all this week. It doesn't heat up at all on anything that I've put it through. Final Cut, exporting, importing, it just stays great. But if you are gonna be doing a lot of gaming and other things that require a lot of that power, I've been told by a few of my friends that it's probably better off just to upgrade to the Pro. But then finally, let's get down to the number one reason why I would suggest that you buy this laptop. And let's be totally honest, it's the reason why anyone buys anything Apple these days, because there's lots of other great computers out there. But in my opinion, there's no better company than Apple when it comes to just integrating multiple different platforms. You could jump from the MacBook Air to your iPhone to your iPad, the beats that I use to listen to music. Apple's just done such a great job at integrating all of these various parts that anyone could just pick any of these devices up and get straight to work. The amount of time that it took me to set this up and actually get working on a project was less than about an hour and a half. I had a project due the next day and I got to work right away. It worked the first time and I'm really not that good with tech. So if that does apply to you, if you're not the best with figuring out different things, you just want something easy, that's probably the number one reason why I would suggest that you just go and pick up the MacBook Air. It's, in my opinion, the best laptop for students out there right now, and definitely the best tool that I have here in medical school. All right, guys, and that's gonna be it. That is my quick and easy student-focused review for the MacBook Air 2020 with the M1 chip. This video is not sponsored by Apple, although I kind of wish that it was. I'm definitely not trying to sell anyone anything, but if this was something that you were still on the fence about, I would highly recommend it. It's been able to handle anything that I've thrown at it so far here in medical school, whether that's video editing or getting projects done or even streaming Netflix on the side if I have any time left over in the day. I just think that the functionality is so awesome. The battery life is great. The ecosystem that Apple's been able to put together and the intuitiveness that comes with their products, you really just can't beat them. And the price point is amazing. It's the price of one cup of coffee every single week at Starbucks for as long as you hold the laptop for. So that's gonna be it. Let me know what you guys think about the MacBook Air in the comments section below. If you guys have already picked one up, how do you like it so far? Or maybe reasons why you disagree with some of the stuff that I said. But other than that, we'll see you guys all on the next one. Everyone take care.